All right, so this is the TSC 300 PDS shock and just going through it. So this is, I'd feel like a liar if I didn't call it a Explorer PDS shock because that's really what it is. It's an Explorer PDS. There are differences, but they're minor. Um, everything in here is pretty standard per an Explorer. Um, it's copied pretty darn close. Valving is very different from an Explorer except for topmost um was that secondary compression valving um let's see little items for this shock so this shock clevis let's see that. shock clevis so i the rebound adjuster was stripped on this one uh, just be aware, be very cautious of the rebound adjuster on these. And that is because, so it's a simple setup. There's the rebound adjuster. It's just threaded on the ends there. But this feels like it's some kind of harder metal. It doesn't feel like aluminum. And this is definitely aluminum. These are very fine threads. And the threads are actually in here, inside this clevis. And on this one, the threads inside there are stripped. So for these rebound adjusters, they have a, in this bag, there's a small set screw. So there's a ball bearing that goes in there, a little spring, and then a set screw that holds onto it, runs in these little grooves on the uh, rebound adjuster itself and makes a clicking noise, and that just screws in and out. But basically, if you screw that to the right too far and use pressure pushing in on it this way, you can get it to go past the threads in there and strip out the ends of the threads where the rebound adjuster will go too far in. And the only way to get that out is take the shock apart. So I got a new one of these that I'm gonna use, so I'm not even worried about that one. I just took it apart because I wanted to see how this worked in there and there's the little pieces inside. So let's go through the shock. Um, Gosh, I forgot to measure the spring, but I'm pretty sure the spring is the exact same measurement of a KTM PDS. Um, it's like, what, 240 to 260 millimeters, somewhere around there? I forget. But it's the same as a KTM PDS. Now, I've heard for the seals on here that the Explorer PDS seals don't work, but I don't fully trust that because I've looked at the seal markings on here and these are the same size seals as an Explorer PDS shock. So no difference there that I can see. But again, don't quote me on that. If you use WP seals and it leaks, it's not my fault. Um, shock body really does match WP. There's inside, I have, this is the bladder conversion. I took the bladder out so it's just empty in there pretty standard and have the compression adjuster here and we'll take apart the main rod in just a second I'm just kind of working our way through it all so compression adjuster and pretty easy going with taking this apart because I've already marked down everything that's in here and I know how to put it all back together. So there is the compression adjuster. So main outside part, 17 mil nut on the outside. All that does is that screws in, hits that pressure plate, which puts weight preload on the spring, which preloads your shim stack. So that's what your high speed compression adjuster is doing. And then your other compression adjuster, on there is just changing the rod height that's inside this little thing. Then we have a shim stack and valves. So there's compression adjuster. Um, from everything I've seen with this, identical to a KTM. The one thing that might be different, and I think KTM changed this around multiple years, is these springs. The uh, the amount of tension that those have. Like you might be able to find ones with different amounts of tension, which will change how your adjuster affects the shim stack. 
All right, so let's move forward. So next up, the only other thing here really is the main rod. And this all has a very, 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 very similar setup to Explorer PDS. It's an Explorer PDS copy. And there's the dampener and the rod. So, have the main rod here. This is inside the main rod, goes right up the middle. So that's hanging out the bottom right there. Rebound adjuster, all it does is raise and lower that needle inside there. So that's how the one rebound adjuster works and I need to double check how many counts on my rebound. That's just reminding me. But then we have the lower main valve compression stack, valve, uh, rebound stack here, and the top PDS compression stack. This top PDS compression stack is the only one that's I nearly identical to KTM. It's not identical, but it's it's close enough where I know they looked at a KTM shim stack and they stole it. <laughs> these these two shim stacks are very different, and I think there's some errors that they did with those two shim stacks that I'm going to look at fixing. Um, so yeah. That is the TSE 300 Explorer Shock. It really is an Explorer. Um, I haven't used Explorer parts in here yet, but it is very likely that I'm gonna take a, uh, get a nice seal for this to use that. Um, other than that, I mean, shims are just whatever. It's a piece of metal. Doesn't matter where those are coming from. But yeah, there's the Explorer Shock. Oh, uh, adjustments. So, this uh, the compression adjuster, this is right now is turned all the way out. So when it's turned all the way out, you'll see the little lip of the inner part coming out just lightly. That does still create preload on there though. You still have about two millimeters of preload on this thing when you put that on. Um, the main compression adjuster, let me double check that. It should have about 24 clicks with this guy. And I need to go double check the clicks on my rebound adjuster, but I think it was like 28 to 32 or something. It had a good amount. But yeah, I'm gonna revalve this thing, put it back together and test it out and just see how it works. I'm no expert, but I'm fairly certain that the valving is causing issues on these. But anyway, that's what we're gonna figure out. We learn when it's cold outside and we can't ride. <laughs>